Hello and welcome to Techquipment's webinar on not fluid mechanics. In fact, <laughs> we are actually <laughs> come on, the title come in on, there. <laughs> we're on thermodynamics. It's part of the mistake. So today we're talking about thermodynamics, um, practical teaching. I am joined by Dave Giddings today, and Dave um, greetings, is not. Greetings. <laughs> Greetings, Dave. You're not in your home office today, are you? You are. I am in an office. Uh, uh, I, I'm in a uh, rented space. Put it that way. I'm in rented space in Burton. Um, brilliant. So, yes. You so far, are... the internet. The internet's holding up so far. So, fingers crossed. Fantastic. Right. Okay. Well, I am in my home office, uh, and we are ready to talk about thermodynamics and practical teaching equipment. First of all, I'd like to do a quick shout out to Hendra Anto. Wonderful to see you. Now, as on the theme of perhaps not being in your traditional location, perhaps you could let us know where you're watching this from, where in the world, but maybe you're in your garden, maybe you're in your kitchen, maybe you've gone for a walk and you're sat on the side of a hill watching watching us on your 4G um, bandwidth, do let us know. Uh, Sambi, it's great to see you as well online. I'm really pleased to see that you love our channel. Let's hope you continue to love our channel after today's webinar. All right, uh, so we have lots of people watching us today. During the course of this webinar, it is live um, and we will be responding to your questions, giving you shout outs to the likes of Balaji from Amrita University in India. Great to see you there. And we've also got Semi joining us as well. Fantastic to see you once more. So being live, you can ask your questions. You can put them in the chat box, which I have over here on my right hand screen um, and um, we can we'll address those as we go through and we'll have a Q&A section at the end. I'll be also telling you a little bit more about how you might be going about uh, creating a lab experiment video. If you can't get your students into the labs, you're thinking about how you're going to address this solution in the forthcoming months. I've got some tips for you that on that as well. Um, and I've got some more, some other bits of extra information to share with you as well. Uh, Sam Bit, I'm hoping Hoping if you've got specific questions relating to those creation of videos, do put them in the chat box and I'll uh, attempt to answer them the best way I can. So we're talking thermodynamics today and, and here I am. I'm even, I've got props. Um, I've, got a, I've got a candle. <laughs> I've even lit the candle here. Um, oh no. Because, but thermodynamics isn't just about heat, is it Dave? No, it's about temperature as well. And they are two different things, Dion. Okay. Brilliant. Good. Temperature, temperature. What everybody knows the word temperature, but what is temperature? Uh, well, temperature is the hotness or coldness of a body. I'm not talking a body. It could be a body, like a, a can. It's it's how we how we measure the hotness or coldness of a body. I'm jumping ahead here, Dion. I'm yeah, sorry. I'm going to skip back. I'm just trying to give people a bit of a teaser to let them know what is coming up. If you're watching yeah. this on demand uh, and you do have questions afterwards, pop them in the uh, comment box and we will get back to you. Uh, so before we get into talking about thermodynamics, I'm going to tell you a bit about us as a company. First of all, I want to give a quick shout out to Goethe at the Uni University of Bedfordshire. Fantastic to see you with us today. Now, people like Goethe and Semi and Hendrianto and many others watching today will already know quite a lot about tech equipment. We're a UK-based company. We design and manufacture all under one roof uh, in our site in Long Greeton, which will be opening up for more production very, very soon. Um, now, I'm going to tell a few more details for those who don't know so much about us. I will keep it brief, though, because I know you're desperate to hear more about the thermodynamics, uh, the heat transfer and all the temperature stuff that Dave's going to tell you, all the learning outcomes that you can achieve with different practical teaching equipment from tech equipment. But um, let's have a look at learning a bit more about tech equipment. 
Sambit, I'm just going to tell you, we will explain the complete experimental setup for a thermodynamics lab. We've got some case studies to share with you today as well. So that'll help give you uh, a deeper understanding. Tech equipment, I've already explained, we're all designed and manufactured in the UK. We've got a worldwide presence, over uh, 1,200 different organizations, universities, colleges, industry, in more than 100 different countries. A uh, big, big global spread. We were set up uh, 63 years ago by two gentlemen on a train. If you want to know no more about that wonderful story of chance meeting, uh, then you can check it out on our website on the About Us section. As a company, we're all about developing skill sets for the engineering labour market. That's about creating real life understanding, really engaging students and making them more employable, making them ready for the world of work um, and about providing the best products for practical teaching engineering disciplines. We believe as a company that we don't want to just deliver products and all the supporting teaching material. We believe in being holistically involved in the teaching process at the engineering for engineering educators. So we we do this by providing uh, global communities on LinkedIn and Facebook and YouTube where we get together academics, lab technicians, uh, even students on the YouTube channel. So do make the most of those if you're not already aware of the practical teaching and engineering education communities. I'll come on to talk about more of those in a few moments after Dave has talked about his thermodynamic stuff. Um, we're, we're, I'll also talk about the student competitions during that point as well. How about the products? Yes, we are a manufacturer of engineering teaching products and uh, manufacturing is something, uh, being a high quality manufacturer is something that we're very, very, very proud of. Um, so we, we like to design and manufacture to stand the test of time. We've got products that go back to the 1960s that are still in use. And we're really proud to say that uh, we work closely with our customers so that they can maintain the products uh, decade after decade. But it's about fostering curiosity, sparking compassion, uh, sparking passion, really engaging students with real life worlds, getting hands on that, that we design in mind when we're looking at the, the development of new products and the enhancement of our existing products. Talking about enhancement, we're always looking at ways when we upgrade new versions of the product to to deliver performance that's faster, but not faster by taking away learning outcomes. There's a careful balance, obviously, there to achieve. We want to make the most of lab time with what we have available. So that's how we uh, very much teach the products, but it's uh, everything else wraps around that. We look to how we can simplify teaching so it matches the syllabus, but we also do this by providing supportive instructional and theoretical ma materials. So if you're a customer of ours or even a sales partner of ours, you'll be very familiar with the manuals that go through the theory. Um, they'll uh, outline all the equations, even the history of uh, some uh, principles. So uh, that, that's how we envelope the whole solution for academics around the world. This is not what you're here to learn though. You're here to learn more about thermodynamics and the practical teaching of thermodynamics. So this is a point where I welcome Dave on the line and I check the chat box. Dave, you can go back to explaining <laughs> heat and temperatures again uh, for those people who've joined us a bit later on. Yeah, you were talking about heat and temperature, and I was just jumping the gun a little bit because um, the definition of temperature is the hotness or the coldness of a body. Okay, that's how we define temperature. That's all. That's We've it. That's got, all I had to say. Sambit, <laughs> Sambit's made a really good point. He says modern labs must be designed for low temperature experiments. Need to define that a bit more. What's the definition? In his in his case of a of, of low temperature, yeah. because a lot of our equipments rely on high temperature, like right? the engines, the gas turbines, the the Marset boiler, the the Rankine steam cycle. They all the the, the base the, the the basis of these experiments is is high temperature to generate steam and the and the pressures. Um, so, if if we could explore that in a bit more detail. 
we could see we could fit our products possibly to to that application perhaps we're but thinking we need... of from a safety perspective and um i don't know but we can go through that can't we so if you keep that yeah, in mind as you're going through the next we're not uh, going to be we're not going to ex be able to explore the rankine cycle at water temperature of 20 degrees um for obvious obvious reasons so let's see if we can elaborate on that a little okay so Sambit, do come back to us, pop a comment in yeah. the chat box. Right. But if it's a if it's a trend that's been generated and it's something we should be turning our attention to, then we will. Oh well, actually Sambit's come back to you as and he said, actually these days there is a quest for absolute zero in all modern university. Well, absolute zero, you know, that, that's crossing over into pressure as well, because we do in our experiments refer to absolute zero pressure but if he could give us an application of what they're trying to achieve that would be that would give us a head start you know what's what's the subject area? is it is it gas laws is it uh, one of the laws of thermodynamics I, you know let, let's explore all right brilliant Thank you, Dave. Um, let's. Uh, I'm going to let you crack on with talking about the practical teaching yeah, of let, thermodynamics let, let's now. Get, there you let's go. Get into some products now. Um, this is for me. This is the most unusual situation to be in. I mean, we've done aero, we've done machines, and I've had the the luxury, if you like, of having a couple of notes in front of me. But because of where I am at the moment in a in an office in a hospital, um, I just this situation I'm putting myself deliberately under a bit of pressure here. So let's do it. What are we here for? Previously, I've explained definitions of aerodynamics and machines, but what is thermodynamics? Well, to me, it, it's an area of physics that deals with heat and temperature, which was mentioned by Dion earlier, and, and the relation of heat and temperature to energy, to work, radiation, and basic properties of matter. And the behavior of these quantities, if you like, are governed by the laws of thermodynamics. So there's, there's four laws of thermodynamics. Now, tech equipment products, um, they're all small scale equipments for experiments that look into the laws of thermodynamics okay and this includes real life working systems um, that intentionally and deliberately use industrial components and assemblies so that's that's my interpretation if you like of, of thermodynamics Dion. Dave what are those four laws of thermodynamics? We will come on to that oh, at okay. the end of yeah. Oh he's teasing us <laughs> all right <laughs> well, not so much teasing, but you know, I need to I need to rattle my brain while while we're doing while Fair we're enough. doing the um the presentation. So getting into some of our equipment, because that's what we're here for. One of the, the range areas are our compressors, and we manufacture and sell a two-stage compressor. And this is a self-contained mobile two-stage reciprocating air compressor test set that allows investigations into performance and the operation of a single stage or two stage compressor also with an intercooler built in so that's the gt 103 brilliant okay sorry i'm a bit slow on the uptake i was replying to comments lots of people watching in their home office i was hoping that somebody would be watching for something really exciting uh, i don't know what would be really exciting at the moment given that we're all in lockdown um, do let us know as i've mentioned in the chat box where you are watching us from in the world and whether you're in your home office whether you're in your garden your kitchen your conservatory uh, out on a walk Sorry, Dave, yeah. heat transfer. No, no, that's all right. Lots I'm, I'm, about heat transfer here. In no, fact, no, I couldn't get it all on the slide. I'm rattling my brain as to the laws of thermodynamics. I've been asked this in the lab before, uh, most recently in Ghana. Um, now, I've, the first law is known as the conservation of energy. Okay. Now, for, from back when I was doing physics at school uh, in A levels, 
it, the first law, the law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can be um, converted to another type of energy. It can be formed into another type of energy, but it cannot be created or, or destroyed. So that, that's, that, that's my first law of, of thermodynamics, Dion. Right, great, good, good, good. Uh, okay, so heat let's now. get on to some more products now. Now, heat transfer is an area of, of heat engineering or thermal engineering, okay, um, that, that we are interested in the conversion and exchange of energy in heat in this case between systems. So heat transfer is classed into lots of different subsections, if you like, such as uh, thermal um, conduction, we have uh, radiation and we have convection. So conduction, convection and radiation. So that, that's the areas of heat transfer that we're really interested in, okay? So, Looking at those products here, we can see, let me just see, the light's not so good in here, so I'm having to look Before into... you get into your products, Dave, uh, yeah. Sambit's come back to us with another question. I like you, Sambit, because you're getting really involved today. Can you explain the difference between thermodynamics and thermal engineering, Dave? Well, thermodynamics is, is the, the definition of thermodynamics I gave just not just five minutes ago, okay? Thermal engineering, this... I've not heard of that terminology. Maybe it's a, in a more industrial feel to it. Okay, maybe know. that's a localised term, Sambit. Um, do, uh, maybe, well, maybe we can contact also our sales partner in India who will be more familiar with the localised terms yeah, and how I mean, they fit maybe, with maybe, what we maybe offer. We, maybe we just need to Google the definition of thermal engineering. OK, maybe it's like I said, maybe it's a, an industrial application. Right. Good. Sorry, Dave. Can you see everything now? Can you see yeah, well, now? I, like, the light's not too good in here, uh, even though it's shining off my head. <laughs> that's because it's, it's so hot in here. It's like um, it's like raffles in here. For those that have been to Singapore, <laughs> it's it's absolutely blistering. There's no air con. Um, it's like I need some heat transfer in here. For, so from hot skin to cool air con, you know? But, um, so going back to the the, um, the TD-1003, that's the the radiant transfer experiments. Uh, this this, def this demonstrate the laws of tr radiant transfer from a heat source and a light source. So we can inv investigate the inverse square laws of, um, of distance against uh, intensity. We can show that radiation is inversely proportional to distance, and that's the Stefan Boltzmann law. And we can see the relationship between um, radiation and the source, and that's Kirchhoff's law. So there's some, there's three laws there. Right, okay. That I've mentioned, but it's covered uh, in, the, in the TD-1003. Okay. Uh, right. Um, well, actually, we've got a nice video as well that we've published Ooh. recently on the YouTube channel, not displaying all of those laws. It's just a student video of yeah. a team of students from Nottingham Trent University who were looking at different fabrics, at different colours of fabrics uh, and how that affected yeah, uh, sure. the okay. heat transfer. Okay. So if, somebody, if anybody wants to see that in, in progress, students getting hands on, um, then they could check out that video on our recent they video playlist. They certainly can. So then we move on to, on the left hand, we can see the forced convection heat transfer. That'll be our tech equipment TD1. So this is a trolley mounted piece of equipment. Um, it's mobile. It demonstrates forced convection in heat transfer theory in pipes. So we okay. can look at what, going from our memory, might, we can look at the, Nusselt number and the, the the we can determine the Stanton number and also Reynolds we can we can look at the effects of the Reynolds energy for air so that's a there's a busy piece of equipment there um, but all those key key words there so we've seen Nusselt Reynolds and and Stanton number just on the TD one alone 
if you were looking at uh, the force convection heat transfer experiment that we've got there, how would that most cl closely relate to a real world uh, application? Or is it just a general principles that you know? No, no. To in, here? In, in every house, you will see pipes. Okay. And okay. every pipe, most pipes in your loft will be lagged because yep. of the, the intense uh, permafrost that you get in Matlock <laughs> in the summer. Okay. We go, we go, we go sub zero even on a good day. Now, we, yeah, my we poor vegetables. At, Sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, now, we need to look at the effects of lagging. And the effectiveness of lagging on, on pipes, just as a, a snapshot example there. Right. OK, brilliant. That okay. makes it uh, actually mean something to me now. Yeah. And then we move on to our very popular TD360. Uh, this is a, a benchtop unit, not, not floor mounted. Um, we, we study and we compare small scale heat exchangers to help students understand basically how they work. Um, now, if you buy the base unit, then you need at least one of the four experiments. So that will be Shellen tube, concentric tube, flat plate, and jacketed vessel complete with coil and stirrer. So the, the one of those four, experiments is fundamental to the success of the TD360 uh, platform, the base unit, okay? And yesterday we were talking about this. Um, yeah. Because I asked you the question during our Q&A live about how easy is it to swap these different experiments out? Um, so um, how easy is it? Can we just leave it to a student? Can we just let them go and say, oh, you've got a couple of experiments <laughs> there, swap oh, them out? Honestly. Uh, by nature of its design, it's easy. Um, any one of the four experiments is, is attached by four large knurled screws, so one in each corner. You then have to disengage the quick-release hot and cold water supplies, and then you're left with um, any number of thermocouple plugs that equally are, are identified and unplugged very easily. We're talking minutes, Dion, minutes. No mm -hmm. downtime in the in the transfer of the heat exchangers, none at all. Let the students do it. We want the students to do this. Right, okay? brilliant. Good, good, good. Now let's have a look at what I believe we've got a little bit more on heat transfer now. Do we? Okay. We do. Yes. Were you okay, ready for that, Dave? <laughs> okay, hit me. What have you got? We've got heat exchangers, film eyes and drop wise, Peltier and Seaback. Yeah, yes, some of the yes, yeah, some of these I see quite a lot in my capacities. A T ninety three, the cross flow heat exchanger. Uh well this sits on a bench. We um it, it has a control and instrument panel. We we are looking at the principles and performance of heat exchangers. Okay, so inside of that little working section, we would have a pinned arrangement um, with, with a heater and we just look at the, the heat transfer of that. And then on the right of that, an equipment I don't see too often, although in Texas A&M, which we'll see the case study later on in this show, uh, the film-wise and drop-wise condensation um, we look at heat transfer during different boiling and condensing processes, all right? And then what's next? The TD1007, yeah, quite a popular piece. This looks at, um, well, the TD1007 is, is, is again, it's a cross flow exchanger, but it's water to air exchanger. So we've introduced water into the system okay. and we did, we have different types of um, heat exchanger modules that slide in into that working section. And we have water in and water out and air is introduced into a system that blows through that section. OK, so they're going to radiate on a car. If you can imagine what's right, happening yeah. there, yeah, yeah. You have a radiator full of water. The radiators at the front of the car to attract maximum airflow, 
Yeah. Air travels through the radiator. It hits the air coming from the front of the, the engine and it cools the water that goes back into the engine so you don't overheat. And we don't want your car overheating for Matlock on the M1 to Long Eaton no. because we need you in the office. <sighs> so the, well, not quite yet. <laughs> that's, that's why we need a, a good um, radiator. We are able to study how effective your radiator is on your car. Unless it's air-cooled car, like your v VW engines, for example, on some of them. But for most most part, your car is, uh, is water-cooled. So, Dave, so looking I, at this now, just before you move on, we were talking about yeah. how to swap out the, the different heat exchangers on the TD360 on the previous slide. What about yeah. this? Is this looks a little bit more complicated? To swap no, out? in fact, no. it's pretty much the same. Oh, OK. Uh, you have some little clips that. Oh, yes, came. I see them now, now. Here we go. Oh, yeah, I like them. Yeah, it can. It, those little clips retain the center um experiment you undo the clips you pull apart those outside sections you unclip using the quick release water connections you're then able to extract that experiment and then introduce your new experiment and then you bring it together you use the clips on the side and the top and then you're ready to go again very so this easy. you need to buy your experiments separately that's correct isn't it so you buy the base unit then you get your different experiments different uh, yeah. heat exchanger setups yes 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 you have to choose now i'm you need to look at the data sheet dion because i can't recall whether there were any options or whether the customer actually receives all of those extras so I, can, uh, um, I, I just don't, confirm now, I can't I recall believe. if there's an A, B, C or D. Um, I'll tell you what, let's have a let's have a quick look at this just to confirm yeah. with everybody. I'm not sure whether you can see that on my screen. Um, includes one heat exchanger as standard for a full range of experiments, but there two extras go. are available. Yeah, so different profiles, different number of elements in your in your in your um, water circuit, uh, and you'll get you'll get twice the effectiveness of a system that's got let's say sixteen pipes. If you've got thirty-two pipes traveling through, it's going to be more effective. So that's that's where we look at the the options. Well, we've got okay. one with vertical fins. What's the benefit of using vertical fins, Dave? Well, I mean, vertical fins, if you've got a petrol lawnmower, yeah. if you've got a, a motorcycle, you know, most bikes are air-cooled. The old Volkswagen Beetle engines and camper vans, they were air-cooled. They rely on the, the fins for the air to pass through right. and cool, cool the engine. Yeah. Right, fantastic. So I think we've got Peltier oh, and Seaback yeah. and Excellent. Filmwise and Dropwise. I need to look at that closely because the lot I said the light in here is pretty mm. poor. Uh, yeah, so the TD thousand and eight. This is a benchtop piece of equipment, and and we look at a thermoelectric device, and we go for a Peltier or Seaback test using a heat pump or a generator. Um, I've I've installed one of these in my in my in my time in in the ICT, so um, I can't really go into any more detail on that because I'm I'm a bit rusty on the TD thousand and eight there, um, Dion. And when know, could you compare that to a real world example? Do it, you, it looks, like... it, it's using thermoelectric a thermoelectric device to cool a device. Right. So you, you might see that on a motherboard, for example. But okay. I would have to swat up on my my notes to, to talk further about that. I've only installed one in my life. Yeah. There is what there is a video on our YouTube channel. I did have a little glance to it okay. earlier, but it I, it wasn't me paying 100% of attention, if, if I'm honest. Yeah. So I'm not going to quote the video. I'd encourage people to go and watch it themselves. Search, yeah. uh, search TD 1008. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Next slide. What, what's oh, next? Well, I, we have, I, I, have we talked about film wise and drop wise condensation yes, and boiling? Yes, we, we did. Have. I'm not paying yeah, enough yeah. attention. I'm too busy yeah. watching all the wonderful comments coming through on our live <laughs> chat have. box. Let's no, have I a look not, at what we have now. We I have, have no idea what's coming next. Just so, okay. Gases. Thermo, thermo principles. Okay, these 
I do know this answer to this. The gas laws were kind of not invented, but developed or created at the end of the 18th century. OK, this is when when scientists began to sort of suss out or realize that relate there was a relationship between pressure, volume and temperature of a sample gas. And that can be oxygen. That can be the, the very air that we breathe. OK, and that could be attained and which would hold an, a, an approximation of all gases. So we look at we look at the relationship between pressure, volume and, and a gas. So Boyle's law, uh, starting with the lowest number, uh, sits on top of a bench and it demonstrates the relationship between pressure and volume of an ideal of an ideal gas <coughs> of an ideal gas at a fixed temperature. All right. So you've got two uh, cylinders in there. What's happening with those two different well, cylinders? Well, we are introducing the oil. We use oil because it doesn't leave uh, like a, a tide mark, if you like, on the glass. It doesn't right. cling like water. So okay. oil is a good working, working um, liquid. When we pressurize the gas inside that cylinder, we see an increase in temperature. Mm -hmm. OK, so we're pumping into cylinder number one on the left hand side. That pressure is being transferred into cylinder two. So we're seeing an increase in pressure and we have a thermocouple inside cylinder two. And with the handheld pump, we pump frantically and we see an increase in temperature. Oh, you Increase. see that on the digital uh, on the yep. uh, analog dial gauge there. Yeah, no, uh, no analog, yeah, but we sorry, can manual. also we can also hook that up to VDAS because at the back of the unit there's a sender unit and a, and a K type thermocouple, so we can digitally see an increase in temperature as we apply a positive pressure. That's relationship. Now we can go to a vacuum. When we apply a vacuum, okay. Pressure goes down, but guess what? We also see the temperature go down. Mm -hmm. There's the laws. That's one of the that's one of the laws of the one of the gas laws. Okay, we are able to see that relationships. Um, so it's okay having a textbook that says that. Having this equipment allows you to discover. It's discovery based learning that we're offering here. Don't take our word for it. The equipment will will confirm the theory. Okay. Brilliant. Good. Right. Then we have an, an, an ideal um, gas law. OK, now that is the TD 1001. So that's the gay Lusax law. And again, that looks at the, the relationship between pressure and temperature again, but that's at a fixed volume of an right. ideal gas. So that's the difference. OK, and then finally, what's the jacket thing going on there? We've well, got one cylinder, one jacket, that, and all those be, different. That them. would be an insulating jacket, Dion. Okay. We want to, we want to maintain an equilibrium there. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, so you want to get as steady state as possible to be able to yeah. then do, do your tests. Now, if you're interested in that, when we then you go back to the TD one. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Oh yes. Oh yes. It's all linked. Everything's linked in our range. <laughs> you know, it's all it all means something. But the TD thousand and four is expansion of a perfect gas. OK, now the V at the end means Dion, it has onboard VDAS. Correct. correct? Yes. Uh, uh, okay. VDAS page has now been updated this morning with those details. Absolutely epic beyond belief. <laughs> OK, so this demonstrates the behavior and the expansion process of a perfect gas. All right. So there's, there's the gas laws. In a nutshell, I'm just giving a brief overview here. I hope it teases the viewers to actually go and find out more, either from um, sales at Techwomen or your sales partner or directly you know, to, to us. OK. All right. Next, Steam. Steam is something that I need to feel I need to let off because I'm, I swear the temperature in here is, 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 is 
Hold on. Let me just take a break. Okay, we're good. Steam. What's steam all about? Well, the steam area in our in our uh, in our company catalog profile, it's laboratory scale, um, a steam plant example. Uh, let me just let me just go back. To, maybe I need to. Yeah, let's no, let's go straight into the into the product. TD ten fifty. Do we have that there? We do, we do. That's the big one, and I'm afraid it's a little bit bur blurry at the moment. But it's the yeah, that's the, uh, thermal... the floor standing yeah, trolley okay. mounted. Well, this is a this is a laboratory scaled down steam plant that shows the fun fundamental uh, thermodynamic principles of energy energy conversion and mechanical power measurement. Okay, so we have a boiler. We introduce water into the boiler. We heat that water up uh, with um, a six kilowatt or two times three kilowatt heaters. The steam then drives a motor, a two cylinder mechanical steam powered motor with a band brake. So we can look at the speed, the torque and the power generated by that steam engine or that steam motor. And then we can look at the, the Rankine steam cycle which is, is a, on a graph paper, is four points of that cycle. So it's a really very dynamic piece of equipment here, okay? Um, temperatures get up to about 140 degrees Celsius, and, and we are looking at high pressures also. Then we can go to a more, um, if you like, scaled down equipment. Uh, this is an apparatus that proves the, the pressure relationship for steam, and we look at the Antoine equation. Now, we all assume that water boils at 100 degrees C, which it does, but we also assume water only boils at 100 degrees C, but it doesn't. If we change the pressure in that boiler, we see the boiling temperature change. So if okay. you're mountaineering and you're trying to boil some water <laughs> on your stove, yeah. you've got it and you're up Mount Everest, for example. Yeah. Do you need it to be hotter, don't you? Is that correct? Well, I'm know, sure I'm I've had advice to. I'm not gonna get drawn into this because we could have a separate webinar discussion <laughs> to to learn does water boil at the same temperature at sea level as opposed to um, Jacob's Creek in Derbyshire, which is a little bit above um, sea level. So, you know, I, it's a bit like the argument of, does your water go down a plug hole differently in the Northern Hemisphere as to the Southern Hemisphere? So- um, Oh, okay, it's like that, right, fair this, enough. This, yeah, this, this could open up a whole can of worms, um, maybe for the, next, for the next webinar, okay? All right. Well, so Dave, just to make it clear, would you use the saturated steam as your entry level and use the thermal power plant yeah. for a more advanced, I mean, intermediate, advanced level of teaching? No, well, you would think so, looking at the physical size and the less complexity of the 1006. But the 1006, it, 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 we look at more details about the Antoine equation, which, forgive me, I can't quite recall what the Antoine equation is, but we, they are not like for like. We're not right, comparing okay. apples with apples here. The, the TD1050 does a far more wider range of experiments, whereas the 1006, we can't look at, <clears throat> at the dryness of the steam, the dryness fraction, and we can't look at the Rankine cycle. So <clears throat> it, I guess it can be budget dependent. And what are you, what are you interested in exactly? What's your key? key words in your syllabus here that you need to study right so it's not a simple answer i think the key is to go back to your sales partner uh, work with the sales team to establish exactly what your learning outcomes yeah. are and what your budget is yeah. Yeah. Um, so that you get the right match because it isn't as simple as low level high level <coughs> yeah I, and i don't like to give straightforward answers <laughs> <laughs> you just like to leave us questioning more temperature now dave I would make a good politician, yeah. <laughs> um, so temperature, yeah, what we've got there 
is the TD400. This is one of my favourite pieces of equipment, okay? Even though it doesn't make a noise. Really? It looks quite dull, but I've never had any interaction no, with no. it. I mean, I no, should you... never say any of our products are dull, but, you know, um, it's just because I haven't I've been involved with it. No. Well, you know, you know me, I like anything that's loud and fast. So, so far we've done loud with three machines and we've done fast with um, Aero. Now we're doing... Um, we're doing we're doing this now so thermodynamics so yeah well the td400 um we're able to look at um the accuracy and the linearity on and the characteristics of different methods of temperature measurement so that could be thermocouples could be handheld infrared devices like you see in that yellow little mm -hmm. handheld device there we'll be using thermocouples We'll be using gas thermometers, uh, gas filled thermometers, air filled, liquid filled thermometers, like um, not mercury, mind just just spirit. So we're looking at different types of temperature measurement, and we do that by having an ice bucket and a water heater tank. There, we drop the measurement device into the hot water tank. We then drop it into the ice bucket. We look at the time it takes for the uh, the device to stabilize, and we do a comparison with the others to see which is most effective. Okay, and there's a electronic circuit there. All those little banana plug sockets that you see there, you're able to actually build a circuit. Now, I mentioned Wheatstone Bridge, which we we will speak about next week in our materials webinar that Dion's going to announce at the end of this but we 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 use a thermocouple we then build that thermocouple into a wheatstone bridge and we look at the output the sensitivity of that thermocouple so it's a it's 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 a more interesting piece of equipment Dion that it actually looks okay right okay yeah so so it sounds like you can do very basic teaching in terms of looking oh, yeah. at different measurement type but then yeah. with all these different banana couples you can build it could be a lot more so compl complex and stuff yeah we, we supply j type k type thermocouples you plug those in you make the circuit there's electronics in here right. and you, you can look at the sensitivity and each of these devices has a, a pro and con some might be cheap yeah. It might be, it might be cheap, but response time might be slow. You spend a bit more money, you might find that the response is faster, but it's more expensive. So it's a balance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. Well, I'm certainly going to have to. When we've got one in the factory, I'm going to make some time to go and yeah, play with yeah. one of those. Yeah, we should. I, I don't think there's one in the demo room as we speak. I no. don't believe so. I, no. I can't remember. No, there isn't one. I would okay. have would have identified it and wanted to find out more. Um, now, this is not strictly within our thermodynamics range now, Dave. We're Ooh. on to Ooh. engines, Ooh. but they're connected. Of course, they're one of your favourite topics as well. So I thought yeah. I had to pull it in somehow. We'll, we'll talk about the individual products in a moment, but there's some good video clips there that you may or may not want to play now. Dion. Let's have a look. Um, let's go for this one. Like wanna, the, uh, in fact, no, I want to show that one later. <laughs> we'll go for yeah, this okay. one, the turbo jet trainer, and try and find a bit where we get uh, with the reheat coming out the back. Uh, yeah, that one you are about to play now does not have reheat if it's Derby University. Oh, no. There we go. No, it's just uh, I'm trying to uh, mute it. So we don't have, ah, there we go. Yeah. There's the burn. There's the flame. Well, let's go back to the flame, come back to the flame. Yeah, what I'll talk about, I'll talk about in a little bit more detail, the capabilities. Okay. That's a good picture. Yeah. That's just a cross section of the GT100 there. Okay. Good. Okay, so let's get back to um, gas turbines. Yes. All right. So I'm just going to let you go from here, Dave, on gas turbines. Yes. Uh, so the, I've, have you got a picture of the GT100 uh, 185? No, I haven't. 
Next slide. Right. Nope, that takes us straight out to the case studies, Dave. Okay, well, see if you can exit that and, and we'll continue with the products because um, the, the, yeah, get back to products. Here we go. Let's go back to where we were. There we are. Right, so skip. So we are at the end now, Dave. That's our yeah. engines there. Yeah, so we've, yeah, so what's the next slide after that deal? We're going to case studies now. Okay, well, okay, well, I can talk about uh, engines. Yeah, no problem. So I, I was expecting you to uh, see more slides. Uh, so the GT100 and 185, these are self, well, the 100 is a self contained single shaft gas turbine. Um, it's a thrust jet and it uses kerosene as the working fuel, so which is, is inherently safer than any piece of equipment that uses uh, propane. Um, it's real life, it, it turns at around about 100,000 RPM maximum, which is 1,600 RPM per second, so you can imagine that's real life. Um, like I said, it uses kerosene. We're able to see all the efficiencies, the isentropic efficiency, the mechanical efficiency. We can look at the pressures and the temperatures in the jet pipe as it goes out through the exhaust. The RS version allows us to fit a reheat, so an afterburner that adds an extra layer of thrust out of the engine, so it'll either get you get the jet fighter into trouble deliberately, or it could get them out of trouble. It can assist in takeoff, either on an aircraft carrier or on a, on a terra firma, on a landing strip. Then we have the GT185. Uh, this is a two shaft gas turbine, normally seen in, an, in a helicopter, in a hovercraft, even in a tank. So the first turbine it's, it, it, it sends exhaust to what's called the second turbine or N2, which is a power turbine. This absorbs the power from the first turbine. And again, we can, we can increase and look at the efficiencies of both the turbines and look at the pressures, if you like, involved. And whilst we're on the subject of engines, we also do single cylinder engines. So the TD200, TD300, we do a gasoline engine, we do um, uh, a petrol engine, uh, a diesel engine. We can look at the, the, the speed, the torque, the power, the efficiency, the fuel consumption, the air consumption. We can have a calorimeter. Uh, we have an engine cycle analyzer bundle where we can look at the pressures and the volume inside the cylinder. So a very, very popular and exciting range there. Yeah, that, that'll be the engines. Brilliant. Okay. okay, let's have a look now at case studies. Case studies. We can All share this. World. Yes. Yeah, we can share this mantle. So we go to Texas A&M, and you've been to Texas A&M yourself, haven't you? And yeah. helped do a massive install in the wow, wonderful that was new huge. lab. Yeah, we did it. We I was there in November two thousand and eighteen at the Zachary Building, um, where I installed uh, thermo. Uh, fluids and aerodynamics. So we've had some great case studies there and I myself have done video training, if you like, or videos of each of the products and these these are available. So uh, a wide range of equipments there. Is that film-wise and drop-wise that I can see there that the yes, it is, yeah. students are looking at? Okay. They are, yeah. I actually, I actually gave training on those particular students. So this is particularly pleasing to see those those candid pictures there awesome uh then we've got nottingham trent university um and this is a, a video case study that we've got here nottingham trent university have got a, a whole facility at um, wow well, yeah our close neighbors sorry i'm just um making sure i don't kick the my, they've got my... all different types of pieces of equipment, including yep. uh, the thermodynamics. I'm trying to find yes. a bit of thermodynamics. For they have thermodynamics, us. they have vibrations, they have aerodynamics, uh, materials, vibrations. I think I said that. They have yep. a huge range of equipments there. Yeah. 
Brilliant. OK, uh, so let's uh, you can look at that, that in more detail. Now we've also got Birmingham City University. Have you been to Birmingham City, Dave, the one right in the mm -hmm. centre? Uh, a terrible parking situation. Uh, yes, I have been to Birmingham City. I've do you know what we had to do when we went to film there? We had to borrow a shopping trolley to take oh everything my. from them because we have so much kit. <laughs> Fortunately, there was a shopping trolley just at the entrance of the car park. So we yeah. borrowed this shopping trolley to wheel it into the university because the kit we had so much kit, we just couldn't get close to the building. Sorry, I digress with my little shopping that's, trolley. Trolley. That's OK. Yeah, I've installed multiple equipments there down in, in the basement of that building. Um, vibrations, structures, what else? Uh, they have a wind tunnel, subsonic wind tunnel. They have a two and a half meter flume. So a good case study available on our website. Yeah, they, uh, they have lots of thermo in there. Um, we'll, we'll not show all of you that today, but I would encourage anybody who wants to see a, an extensive lab setup to take a look at what they have at Birmingham City University. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Okay. The next one on our list is Northumbria University, and I'm oh, going to okay, leave yeah. you to tell more about this um, yes, because well, I, know, I, I know very little about that, what they're doing. I know there. for a fact they have a, a um, two-stage compressor because I installed it, and they have fluids, and they have some uh, a centrifugal force, gyroscope, a lot of equipment, some very, very good skill set at that university always a pleasure to go and assist them either literally or or remotely so um i do know they have some mfp equipment there which i can see so yeah uh then we've got the university of derby and this was the video that i was going to show you earlier this <laughs> okay. is because they do yeah. have the turbojet trainer and here yeah. we have a group of students I'll pop that on mute a second a group of students who are actually being shown how to use the equipment by the lecturer and yeah. they actually take the data this is yeah they have a touch screen wide screen like a 65 inch television there which is absolutely incredible I mean jealousy doesn't come into it I mean wow <laughs> fantastic wonderful um explanation there Oops, Daisy. Okay. Um, apologies for that. Did you say? Did you say whoops, a Daisy? Whoops, a Daisy. Yeah. <laughs> um. When we go offline, I will continue this with you afterwards. Okay. Okay. Uh, National College of Nuclear. Uh, we mentioned this last week when we were talking about. We were talking about fluids last week, weren't we? Yeah, we were. Yeah, we mentioned it briefly because I've I, um, I've been to a nuclear facility, if you like, not uh, not Chernobyl, nothing like that. Uh, I've been to BNFL, British, British Nuclear Fuels Limited, um, in the early nineties, and yeah, I saw I saw some th real live thermodynamic equipment or processes going on there, which right. was quite incredible. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they're using the benchtop heat exchanger, which Dave explained more about earlier with the interchangeable different experiment heat, heat exchanger modules that, go, um, yeah. that are part of that. Right, so that's the case studies. Uh, again, we've not gone through those in detail. You can look at our case studies area of the Tech Equipment website for more details on that. So Dave, you can take a bit of a breather, have a drink. <laughs> Cool down, go stand by the window or something. While okay, I talk no, to no. a little about remote learning support it's, now. Okay, okay, I'll join you in a few minutes. Right, so um, at the moment, it's very tricky time. Many of us are um, still working from our home offices. We're starting to think about how can we deliver remote learning content solving the initial problem but also solving uh, the initial education needs for the forthcoming months. What we're trying to do here at Tech Equipment is uh, protect people around the world by our factory being closed for a while although it will be opening quite soon to start beginning production with social distancing measures in place uh, but we are about delivering customer support and helping you with this remote learning so we've got the, um, the communities that I mentioned earlier we've got the practical teaching and engineering education communities on LinkedIn and Facebook this is a great opportunity to talk about your ideas share thoughts what are you going to be doing uh, to 
address the practical teaching remote learning challenges? Are you going to be creating videos, for example? Um, are you going to be getting students in, in small groups, clusters and uh, doing social distanced experiments? Uh, it'll be interesting to hear. In fact, if you're watching right now and you're an academic, a lab technician, uh, do pop in, your, in the chat box what you're currently thinking of doing at the moment and what your current challenge is. And let's, uh, let's all see if we can help each other with our ideas. We've also got various resources in terms of uh, engaging people. We've got an engineering videos guide. If you're looking for content to supplement your lecture material that you're providing online, videos are a great way of doing that. Of course, they're not as good as practical hands-on. You miss out on lots by doing that, but it still does go some way to fill the education, the knowledge gap. So this, you can look on our uh, webpage, uh, remote dash learning dash support um, to find out more there uh, and to be able to download this PDF. We've also, every week we're, we're releasing student experiment videos um, and these are coming from students, excuse me while I have a tickly nose, um, from Nottingham Trent University who entered the uh, Tech Equipment Sponsored student 2020 competition we i mentioned the uh are looking at radiant uh heat transfer earlier there's a, 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 comp um, a competition video that we published very recently on that and you can see that being used other things that we have is every wednesday we have live q a sessions where you can ask digital dave dave who's online with us today you can ask him uh, technical questions uh, we're talking all, uh, all kinds of things actually in those sessions and we have a guest joining us every week as well uh, yesterday we had a really interesting guest uh, victor fitzgerald he was talking about uh, engaging students uh, tips for engaging students, particularly during COVID-19, uh, how we might improve that going forward. Now, I mentioned earlier and a few minutes ago about if you're looking at developing your own lab experiment videos, and I've been contacted by a few, a few people about, about this. Uh, so we do have a very simple step-by-step -step video here that gives you some step, tips, top nine tips really, um, whether it's uh, filming and the filming, the background, the lighting, the sound, the editing, uh, even the script, do have a look at that because that gives you some nice, simple ideas. You may also be thinking of how can you make it an interactive experience? You might be thinking about live stream technology that we're doing today. We utilize Zoom and what we're doing is we're putting, we're connecting Zoom into YouTube. Um, now, unless you've got a YouTube channel of more than a thousand sub subscribers, you're not going to be able to live stream, but of course you can share your Zoom meeting and engage your students that way. Uh, so do share your ideas, share your challenges, share your thoughts and uh, come over to us if you think we might be able to help you uh, create a bespoke solution. Uh, more on advice really is what we're, um, what we're saying here. Okay. So that's it from remote learning. I do encourage you to set a, check out the webpage, which is techquipment.com forward slash remote dash learning dash support. Right, let's have a look now at um, the Rangers overview. And I'm pleased you've returned, Dave, because this I'm is here. the point. Um, we've covered everything on thermodynamics. Um, but now, for those who aren't familiar with what else we cover, uh, Dave's going to give you a very, very quick overview now. I am indeed. Where should we start? Let's start with engineering science, Dion. Brilliant. Here we go. All right. Okay. This is the range that I've actually had least exposure to. Um, but I know that you've been involved heavily in the last few weeks at home with some good marketing work and some good videos. Um, so just a paragraph about each of these ranges. So there's a rate, this range includes, or don't, yeah, it, there are 18 modular experiments covering subject areas, moments, friction, gears, cams, a tensile tester, all sit on the, the essential 
uh, work panel that sits on a bench top or in fact on the trolley that you can see there. And depending on the experiment, depends on whether you, you adjust that panel to be in portrait or in landscape. So that's pretty much a summary of the, of the engineering range. The engineering science range, I'm creating and um, developing a new appreciation for because these are um, equipment that I can film from home. So uh, last week we, we looked at bar linkages. What I'd like to say is these are just so versatile. The likes of Nottingham Trent University, I speak to Ben Simpson, the lecturer there, and he has the yeah. full kit because it, he's like, I've got tens and tens of different experiments available just in this one trolley. And it, you you can learn very basic things like i.e with bar linkages you can just I could mess around with my you know primary school children uh, so we could look at different bar linkages but it then goes up um, we've got the theory to back it up and all the yeah. measurements that take it up to that kind of university okay first year entry level university level um, yeah. it, but gives you those real details so it's a lot a lot of flexibility with them um, uh, fairly you know a good cost here uh, you, you can even break specimens like in that ES6 there, we've got that tensile tester, where you can take them out. It's good for outreach as well. So if you're doing outreach programs going into schools and colleges, well, you can take this kind of kit in your car um, and start engaging students hands on. Certainly can. Sorry, Dave, hijacked you there. That, Here's that, your so fluid you, mechanics. You are allowed. So, yeah, th this is an extensive range of very high quality um, fluid mechanics, teaching equipment and lab equipment. So we, we've covered th uh, fluids. So we have flumes, we have modular fluid power, um, we have uh, fluid friction, losses in pipes, uh, a lot of subject areas that we're able to cover pretty much all or most of fluid mechanics courses in, in, in universities and colleges. Brilliant. Okay, let's see what else we have on our bubble wheel. Engines. engines. You yeah, kind of we talked well, about already. We, we we spoke about engines in the thermo, but we've got. I'll just repeat it briefly. So we've got internal combustion engines. What we see there is the TD three hundred. Uh, we also have a TD two hundred with single cylinder engines. Looking at the performance, uh, the efficiencies, the fuel consumption, air consumption. Um, yeah, the efficiencies, the thermal efficiency. Yeah, very, very dynamic um, piece of equipment and gas turbines as well fall in that category as well. Control engineering. Yeah, so this offers uh, fundamental and advanced investigations into uh, control principles and in actual applications found in industry. Now, when I say industry, in the real world, so that could be... Well, it could the, be the rocket launch last night that was supposed to happen. Yeah. Well, but it that, was, that I think was, it's going to happen on Saturday now. That was because it was raining or something like that. I think it was yeah, bad weather. I was weather. disappointed. I was all sat waiting for it to happen. Yeah, but I think it's still going to be visible when it for, in the, for those in the UK when it does eventually launch, I think. But it might change. It might change now after a few days, OK? Um, so, yeah. Stability of a, an, a ship, a rocket, an aircraft falls into control engineering. All of our CE range includes the, 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 the CE 2000 software, where you can also use it for simulated control uh, experiments, which moves us kind of nicely onto process control. We're looking at fundamental and advanced uh, studies into real life processes, okay? Does so that include uh, PID, uh, cascade control, control of fluids? So that would be pressure, flow, level, and temperature. Again, we supply dedicated software um, developed by Tech Equipment to support our process control range. Brilliant. And so uh, we cover all different levels there, don't we, Dave? From, you know, we cover all bases. Yeah. All bases, yeah. Okay. Now for something completely different, um, our electrical power systems. This provides advanced technical teaching 
and training equipment for all elements of a power system, okay? That include uh, generation, transformation, transmission, distribution, uh, how to use it, and also protection, okay? So those key areas. Are these scalable products? It provides hands-on learning of a power system. There's options of hardware and software. So we have a second generator, for example. We can offer a SCADA system, uh, remote uh, control and data acquisition. And then we have um, the version in a modular format. So the, the PL, we have the PSL 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Materials. Well, we get to break things in materials uh, for the most part, on purpose, mind, not, not accidental. Um, so, you know, materials is uh, a fundamental part of engineering courses, mechanical engineering. So we look at uh, with the range, we look at um, tension, compression, impact, hardness testing, we look at stress, we look at strain um, analysis, and structural experiments. Uh, most of this equipment uh, makes use of VDAS, um, our data acquisition system. Uh, now, Dion is is moving at a, at a pace. I'm now. keeping you at a up. pace because that's coming up <laughs> next week, and I don't want Ooh. you to. I want to tease everybody. This is okay. so. Cush your mouth, Dave. We will okay. come back next week, and you can tell us more. I consider that done. <laughs> so the environmental range offers uh, a teaching or offers teaching equipment covering the fundamental theories associated with thermodynamics. So and fluid mechanics and heat transfer. So what does that mean? Cooling, refrigeration, humidity, and air conditioning. We cover that. We cover that in 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 the environmental control range. Skip that. <laughs> yeah, we are going straight on to structures. Yeah, so small scale equipment, um, all bench top equipment. We are market leader in structures. Um, it includes static fundamentals. There are 19 experiments. The hardware can be used standalone, or we can, we can uh, offer the STR2000 that looks at uh, ADA or data capture, but also with the software, you get the option of carrying out virtual experiments on all 19 of the experiments in, in that range. Now, the, we do have some exciting news coming up on the structures range in the near future. I'm not at liberty to share you uh, what, with you the details of that news. I can just tell you it's coming. So watch this space. Um, watch this space. Yes, absolutely. Indeed. Next, next one, VDAS. Yeah, this is this is Tech Equipment's proprietary um, data acquisition designed by us, obviously, uh, to work across multiple products in multiple ranges. Okay, the software itself is free of charge, downloadable, not unlocked, but you will need the hub, which of course is chargeable. So the software is designed for ease of use, easy understanding, quick, reliable data capture, ruling out any errors that may be associated with the user using an old fashioned pen and paper method. So, the data can be captured, stored, exported directly into Microsoft Excel, allowing for the students to, to run away, to scamper home and do all their work remote from the lab. So uh, an obvious advantage there for having the VDAS system in place. Really, uh, just to highlight, you, you, there are various different options. S some of the products have it integrated. It's called VDAS on board. You can buy bench mounted, frame mounted. The software is free to download, and that's the nice thing. And it's unlimited, so it's not like you can just get ten seats. And um, yeah. students, you know, 
great cohorts of students can come churning through the lab. They can all download it onto their laptops if they want, be able to connect it up and take the data directly. Uh, I mean, not that you, the Excel output makes it versatile, so you can easily file transfer, but um, it, it is unlimitless in that respect. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dave. But before we do go, we've got a little brief bit. Uh, it's sunny outside. And so I'd like to talk about solar. Tell us a bit about what we what oh, have here. Oh, nice. Very smooth. Yeah, very oh. smooth. Uh, well, the solar equipment, um, it, this range looks at the core principles of solar energy. So we have a solar collector. We have photovoltaic cells. We have a thermal energy collector focusing solar energy collectors we can learn about the effectiveness and the efficiencies of these systems and also their limitations of these systems so that's just about covers solar aerodynamics well we all know about aerodynamics if you followed um in the last few weeks range of subsonic wind tunnels moving up to from bench mounted versions to floor mounted different working sections so 300 uh, 40 uh, 450 600 work millimeter working sections then we go uh, higher higher speed we get into supersonic airflow so we can look at nozzles with the af27 we can look at uh, two-dimensional models and pressure profiles uh, and mach numbers on 2D models in our supersonic wind tunnels. Uh, so a, a whole range of equipment in aerodynamics. And we can also get to fly a plane in the flight demonstration wind tunnel. We can look at the lift, we can look at the altitude, the stalling, the wind speed in knots and the force generated by, by, the, by, the, by the wings. So um, very exciting range of equipment. But if you do want to learn more about that, we have got the webinar that we did a good few weeks ago uh, that you can watch on the aerodynamics range. This is one that Dave is exceptionally passionate about. And with good reason, because it's such an exciting, engaging range of equipment from uh, you know, bench mounted stuff to a huge nine meter long pieces of kit, uh, supersonic shock waves, and all that drama that goes with aerodynamics. Yeah. Right, yeah. uh, theory of machines, which also you really like theory of machines as well, don't you, Dave? Yeah, we've we've done a, we've done theory of machines just um, quite, quite recently. So this can cover gears, cams, vibrations, whirling of shafts, um, a whole plethora of, of of subject areas that can just be seen in that gearbox there. Um, so you know, it's a um, very relevant subject area in, in engineering. Wonderful. So that's it for the thermodynamics webinar for the ranges overview. So we've talked thermodynamics, we've looked at all the webinars, uh, the ranges. Now, now you don't have to leave yet because we still have other things to talk about. We've got the Q&A section and the questions that other people ask may well be uh, things that are on the tip of your tongue, but you just don't have the confidence to put your question in the chat box. Do pluck up the courage, put the question in there, and we'll come back to those shortly. Before we do that, I mentioned about her being a holistic partner in teaching. I also mentioned about the student competition and how weekly at the moment we're sharing different student videos. Uh, we've been working with universities and colleges around the world, uh, most notably Nottingham Trench University, uh, where we've been running student level competitions where students have to create five minute videos looking at some theory. This is particularly often uh, they're looking in this case at aerodynamics, thermodynamics, uh, fluids. So these videos do keep a lookout for. On the 9th of June, we will be revealing the winner of the 2020 student competition from Nottingham Trent University. There were 16 different groups of students there. Uh, so if you want to watch that premiere at 2 p.m. BST on the 9th of June, as the winners find out who they are and who are the specially commended, then do join us then for that. If you're interested in getting involved, being part of this uh, competition movement, then do get in contact with me. 
uh, don't worry about the time frames. we can make it work for you. We're working on very much of a flexible approach at the moment, as we all need to adjust with the times. Uh, as part of being a holistic partner for industry, we work actively in helping inform, um, shed a light on what the perceptions are in the industry. We did a research study in 2018 and 2019, where we surveyed over 100 people from around the world about their perceptions of practical teaching in engineering education. You can find the highlights of those on the website, but some of those highlights are shown here today. I particularly want to come to the, the, the uh, part of the infographic in the right hand corner. 90% of academics believe that practical learning is extremely important for student employability. Uh, and it's going to be very interesting to see how uh, everybody copes during this time of remote learning, uh, how we can achieve that. I know some people have specifically asked us in the chat box about resources, uh, experiments that you can do at home. Uh, I I haven't got any specific equipment that we as a company provide. We provide very much lab-based equipment, uh, full scale that replicate what's happening in industry. But there are certainly many, many YouTube videos out there that uh, show different principles and how you, you know, thermodynamics, how you can do different experiments with home appliances, boiling of kettles and things like that. So I'd encourage you to have a look at those, but um, I don't have any on hand for you to share today. That's it for looking at that. Now we get to go to talk about the question and answers. This is your opportunity uh, to put in your questions in the chat box. Now we've had some who uh, that have come in through the course of the session, Dave. Um, one question, which I'm not going to ask to Dave, I'm going to ask to myself, is what's the total cost of a control engineering lab? Now, this is a this is not a question, unfortunately, I can answer um, because this very much depends on what your learning objectives are and what you, what pieces of equipment you want. Um, so, I would encourage you to find out who your local sales partner is, and we've got um, a contact us page on the Tech Equipment website. If you don't already know who your local sales partner is. Uh, so, so Sambit, yes, it's working through that local sales partner or contacting us directly and we'll help uh, look at your learning outcomes, define what pieces of equipment you need, and then we can come up with a quote for you as well. Yeah. Are they an end user, Dion? Or uh, yes, is Sambit this... is an end user. Sambit's had lots of different questions for yeah. us today. Sambit is in India, so you need to contact EduTech. Yeah, I mean, it all dep of course, it depends on the budget available as well. Um, yeah. So if there's budget, then we can tailor something for sure. Yeah. Um, and maybe it was Sambi or somebody else. Yeah, Sambi also asked, do we have any uh, manufacturing in India? And the answer is no. We design and manufacture it everything in the UK. Uh, we could very much keep a handle on our quality control. And that's, yeah. uh, you know, we offer a five year warranty um, for that reason that we can maintain a very, very uh, close handle and detail on the process, the materials we use, the suppliers we use, etc. So that you know, you're going to get something from us that is going to last. Um, yeah. and, the, and it's just a close proximity thing that I'm talking about there. Um, Sambi, you also talk about, a, I think you were talking about a steam, a steam digester of Dennis Pan. Um, and I'm not sure what, I think we were talking, going back to that uh, thermodynamics and thermoengineering question. Um, well, here's, send, yeah, it, Sambi, send it through. Yeah, so I think uh, for more details, Sambit, uh, you clearly have lots and lots of things to talk about. You can email customer care at techquipment.com or sales at techquipment.com or um, speak to the local sales partner to help you with that. But yeah. Sambit does ask is, I have a very interesting query. Can it be possible to explain the historical development of thermodynamics through an experimental setup by doing these historical experiments? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've mentioned some of those key words 
that um, are included in our, for, for example, in our gas laws. You know, yeah. these, are, these are historical experiments and steam was a historical, you know, going back to the Industrial Revolution, for example. Yeah. So, yeah, just tell us the key words. That's, that's, that's all I need is some key words from, from um, either his syllabus or if he knows what his learning outcomes are. Let, let me see them. Let me, let me digest. Let me pull them apart and see what I can make of, of his learning outcomes. So I'm happy for you to give either Edutech's address or, you know, or, or my, my own at this early stage. It's, it, it's, 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 it's up to you. Talking of keywords, uh, I would encourage you to pop over onto the techquipment.com website. Uh, pop in, you can put anything in like Anton Equation, Seebeck Effect. It will find the teaching product that you need for understanding that theory. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also you can do the same with a catalog, the very back of the catalog, anybody who's got a copy of the catalog, you can't actually see it because it likes to blur it out. <laughs> That's yeah. exceptionally annoying. But are the back of the catalogue we do have a, a section where it lists uh, a keyword index so if you say Darcy's law I, I can look at the H312 and it's on page 130 for example well that about wraps us up for the questions today um, Dave thank you so much uh, you're welcome you, you've done this un under uh, very difficult circumstances from the, the room in the hospital there and appreciate uh, you you doing that and sweating so heavily for us. Yeah, well, um, there, there is a fountain outside here. So I'm going to be on YouTube later for all the wrong reasons, probably. You know? <laughs> Keep your clothes on, Dave. <laughs> right, um, let's, um, I just want to check if we've got any more questions. Uh, thank you very much for the feedback, everybody, for letting us know where in the world you are, where you've been sat watching this. And most people are in their home office, uh, as you would expect. Stay home and stay safe indeed That's, yes that wraps us up for today do join us next week when we are talking about materials mm -hmm. testing and properties on the 4th of june uh, so join us then go back and check out previous webinars if you're interested in aerodynamics fluid mechanics theory of machines um, we have more interesting discussions there and don't forget to join us next week for the q a live on the wednesdays as well so that's all from us. Thank you very much, everybody, and see you next time.